Today's video is going to be covering the main category of the shader, which is the very first category in the shader. If you have any questions about this video or anything in the shader at all, please direct them to the Discord server. There's a link in the description below. All right, let's get started. So the very first thing in the shader is color and alpha, and it does exactly what it says. It changes the color and the alpha. So because we're using the cutout shader, it all it can really do is cut out little holes in it. It can't really make it transparent. So you're going to get dithering is what this is called. And if you wanted a smoother transition to transparency, you would use the transparent shader. So I'm going to set this to 50%-ish and then just leave it there. Next up we have the main texture, which is basically the main color for your model. It's the texture that gets overlaid on the model. So we have this sort of grid right here, and you can adjust that by clicking this little circle, and you can pick any texture you want. We're just going to leave this one. And if you hit this little triangle, it actually pulls out a menu, a drop-down menu. And the tiling can be adjusted, so you can make it more dense by making it like 3x3 three three tiling, or less dense by sort of going like 0 0.5, 0 0.5. We're just going to leave it at 1. The offset offsets the texture. And panning is just a continuous offset. UV is a UV selection. So UVs are created in 3D modeling programs, and they basically are coordinates on the model for where your texture will show up. So UV0 is the default, and most models will only have a UV0, but you can make more. So this model has a UV0 and a UV1, but it does not have a UV2 and UV3. So all it's doing in UV2 and 3 is stretching out a point across the entire surface because the UV is like 0, 0, so it's just using the coordinate 0, 0 of the texture over and over and over. Distorted UV will be talked about in the distortion video, so stay tuned for that. Hit that sub. Saturation is just how saturated something is. So you can see the color here is not a fully saturated color, and we have moved the saturation slider to make it fully saturated. You can go the other way and make it desaturated so there's no color at all. Uh, we're just going to leave it fully saturated. Next up we have vertex colors. Vertex colors are colors stored in the vertices of your mesh. If you don't know what a vertice is, let me just switch this to shaded wireframe. You can see the polygons. Each of these triangles is a polygon. And the vertice is where they connect. It's this little dot. So you can store colors in there and then color your mesh with that. And there's some advantages and disadvantages to doing that. You're never really going to do this unless you have a really specific use case. But know that it's there and you can do it. So I can't really show you this because I have no vertex colors, but that's what it is. Basic emission is basically the, the ability to make your model sort of emit, look like it's emitting light. It won't emit light on the surface around it, as you can see, but it will constantly be lit up. So we have a rainbow texture on this and an emission of one, meaning that it's always going to like emit one light, which is sort of the max light. And you can go above that, but it's going to wash it out. If you had post-processing in your scene, you could actually sort of bloom out and see uh, a glow around the model but you would need post-processing for that and I'm not going to explain that here. You can look up post-processing tutorials on YouTube. So uh, I'm going to turn the light off and you can see that it stays the same brightness because it's emitting light. Next up we have normal maps. Um, <clears throat> let me explain what a normal is first. So a normal is sort of the direction of the surface. So if we go back to that shaded wireframe mode you can see that there's the polygons, and then each vertice has a direction for the normal. So I actually go down into the debug settings. I'm not going to explain all of these, but I'm just going to use it to show you. You can look up the normal data, so the vertex normals, and you can see as the surface curves, you're getting different normals. So these colors are representing just like directions because a color is an R, G, and B value that can also store a three-dimensional direction. 
So the normal for say up here would just be like straight up and then here it would be like off to the side and here over here, like off to this way. And the normal map, let me turn this off. The normal map basically adjusts those. So you can make the surface of the model appear sort of appear to face away from the light or towards the light. So down here, even though it's facing pretty away from the light, the normal has it sort of facing towards it. And up here, even though it should be pretty light, the normal is facing away from the light. So the light's up over there, and the normal is probably facing like that way. <clears throat> All right. And the normal map has a drop down. You can do whatever you want in there. Normal intensity is just how intense those normals are. So basically, like, it moves them further in the direction that they are away from the straight out direction. So if the top of the sphere had a straight out direction of like up and your normal was like this, the straight like increasing the intensity would move the normal more in this direction. So we're going to leave that at 0.5 to sort of soften the normals. <clears throat> and last but not least, we have the alpha map. So the alpha map can control the alpha or the transparency of your model. Again, we're using cutout, so it's not going to be as soft as it could be with transparent. You should try to use cutout when you can, and you can actually do some stuff to make this look really good. I'll cover that in the alpha options video, so hold tight for that. And you can do the same thing you can do with everything else. <clears throat> I got the wrong material selected. So you can like tile it more or less and pan it and do stuff like that. And then that will give you transparency in the black area and be fully opaque in the white area. I can actually pull up this texture and you can see that there's sort of black lines and that's where the mesh is transparent and the white areas is where it's fully opaque. And you can do this with the main texture as well. If your main texture has transparency, it will become transparent. And that really just comes down to how you want to work. You can have a main texture with a lot of detail and transparency and all that, or you can separate it into having only colors in the main texture and then transparency in your alpha map. There's just different use cases for different people. That covers the entirety of the main category. Again, if you have any questions about this, feel free to join the Discord. And I will be uploading this into I'll be uploading this scene into the 6.1 version of the shader. So if you want to grab that, it's available to patrons right now, but it'll be available to everyone else in the coming months or month, whenever it's done. I got to finish all the tutorials. All right. Thanks for watching.